Hi, I'm Rebecca. Welcome back to Lot 65 and today I have for you another book outlet book haul. Um, on Boxing Day I took advantage of the ridiculously amazing sale and deals that they had going on and for a budget conscious book lover it really there's really nothing better. So yeah, this is these are the books that I picked up with the exception of one because I admit I already opened this box. I couldn't help myself. So it's not an unboxing, but I'm just sharing which books I picked. But I lent my mom one of the books, which was Suite Française by Irene Nemirovsky, and it's a World War II story um, written by a lady who was Jewish and was living in Paris during the war, and it was only discovered and published, I think, like almost 60 years after she died, so I thought it sounded like a super awesome book, and so did my mom, obviously, because she borrowed it right away before I even read it. And she hasn't given it back to me yet, so that's that story. Anyway, let's get cracking on this book haul, shall we? Um, okay. So first we have... Yeah, first we have Major Pettigrew's Last Stand by Helen Simonson. And I just thought this sounded like a really sweet story. It's about um, a major in a small English countryside village. He is like a very proper sort of man, but then his brother dies and then he begins a friendship with a local lady who's from Pakistan who runs a little shop, I think. and Love blossoms. Anyway, I just thought it sounded really cute and just sweet, so I'm looking forward to a nice read here, so hopefully I'll like it. We have Incidents in the Life of Marcus Paul by David Adams Richards, and you may or may not know this about me, I love Canadian literature. In my undergrad degree I studied it like almost exclusively, or as much as I could. Um, it shames me to say that I haven't read anything by Giller Prize winning writer David Adams Richards, but I'm really looking forward to reading this one. It sounds rather sad. It's about the murder of a young Micmac boy, and um, I think it just follows the story and tries to get to the heart of what happened and like a nuanced portrait of the community in crisis etc. So I think this is probably, a, well this is definitely a very tragic tale, but I'm interested to, to read it nonetheless, so we'll see what I think of that. Um, next is The Enchanted by Renee Denfield. Now this was one of their scratch and dent specials, but I mean I don't mind a little bit of paper missing from the dust jacket. Um, this book I've been looking at all year really, I mean all of 2014, I've seen it in lots of bookshops, I've seen it on best of 2014 lists and heard a lot of awesome things about this book so when I saw it on super sale at the book outlet I was like yep, yep, that's coming home to me. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Uh, next is the Transcriptionist, which I pretty much bought on its title alone. I don't really know a whole lot about this book. It's about a transcriptionist who works for a New York City newspaper. Um, a kind of crazy story about a woman getting mauled by lions happens and sort of shakes her out of her comfortable little job and I guess assume she must sort of investigate what happens. Anyway, and this is by Amy Rowland. So, um, yeah, I just it stuck out to me because I've done work as a transcriptionist, so I don't know, I just thought, oh, why not? Anyway, it's sort of fun, so we'll see what I think of this. Next up is a book I am so excited about and I have been looking forward to read for a really long time. Um, it is Codename Verity by Elizabeth Vine. I'm going to say Vine because in German that's how you would say it, so that's what I'm going to do here. Codename Verity. This book was recommended to me by my cousin Rachel. Hey Rachel! And um, she has a very similar literary taste to me, I find, or at least any of the books she's recommended to me I've really enjoyed. So when she talked about this one, it is set in World War II. It's about 
a British spy plane that crashes in Nazi-occupied France, and its pilot and passenger are our best friends, and one has a shot of surviving, the other, assume, like, I, she gets caught, I think, and interrogated, and, uh, it's about their friendship, it's about, like, you know, um, kind of being a prisoner of war, I guess, and it just sounds amazing, and it's an award-winning book, um, Anyway, it's supposed to be really good, and she's not the only one who has talked about it. I've heard a lot of other people say it's excellent, so I am so looking forward to this. I can't wait. Okay. So the next two books are both books that I heard Regan of Peru's Project talk about, and they sort of piqued my interest. This one um, is called Little Bee, and it's like, and I remember Regan even saying like, it's sort of funny because the back of this book really doesn't tell you much about what happens and it says on the back, it's like, we don't want to tell you what happens in this book. It's a truly special story and we don't want to spoil it. Nevertheless, um, you need to know a few things. So it's a story of two women, their lives collide, one of them has a terrible decision to make, and then two years later they meet again and the story starts there. So I just, when, I remember when Rankin said that and she was sort of like, we don't want to tell you what happens and I was like, it, that was enough to sort of win me over so when I saw this one I was like getting it yes um, next is also a book that Regan mentioned and as soon as she talked about it I was like oh my gosh I need to read this book it is lexicon by Max Berry and it is set in a society like I think a fairly realistic sort of maybe a bit futuristic society where words are wielded as weapons and instead of like learning the usual things that we all would learn in school like history and math etc etc the students um learn things like how to persuade how to use language to manipulate minds how to wield words as weapons and the graduates like the very top students graduate as poets and enter a nameless organization of unknown purpose and then i think it follows um a young girl um, on the streets of San Francisco and uh, she attracts the attentions of the organization's recruiters and the story goes from there. I just thought it sounded so cool and I love, I love like words and like linguistics and language and I just thought what a fascinating premise so I'm really really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be a fun read. I hope, hope I like it. Yes. And then, and I just have two more here, so I'm just going to take them both out and get rid of this box. <laughs> Next is How I Came to Sparkle Again by Kaya McLaren, or Kaya McLaren, I'm going to go Kaya maybe. Um, and this is a story of a girl who grows up in a small town called Sparkle, so um, she's literally coming to sparkle again, I guess. and. You know, it's one of those stories where she moves away and then tragedy strikes and she just wants to run home to like a place she feels comfortable, I guess. And so she comes home to Sparkle, Colorado. And I just thought it looked like a sweet sort of kind of, you know, not lighthearted, but easy kind of wintry read, which I mean is perfect for this weekend because it's minus 21 out there. And there's snow drifts across my driveway, which I just shoveled out this morning. So all I want to do is curl up with a hot mug of tea and a book. And I feel like that is what I will probably do after I film this video. Read this. So. And last but not least is Vintage, a novel by Susan Gloss. And this is about a, sto a lady who named Violet who owns... Um, a vintage store and I think it's sort of like the stories of the clothing that she has and like the story of the people who come in and out of her shop and there's a girl who was like looking at a 1950s wedding dress anyway so I just think it's like sort of the characters who, whose lives weave in and out of this pretty little vintage stop shop and the owner's life um, violet so I just thought it sounded like a fun book and I love fashion, I love like fashion related books, like fashion related fiction, so when I saw this I was like, oh that's so my kind of thing, so 
Vintage by Susan Gloss. This is the last book in the box. So that wraps up my book outlet boxing day haul and I hope you liked this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more book, more books, <laughs> for more videos on books and beauty and style and all that kind of fun stuff. And I'll definitely be posting a few more soon, so keep your eyes peeled. And until next time, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!